That was an exciting qualifying effort, regardless whether we're on the pole, just all those fast cars that were going late and just, you know, the times just dropping. Um, so it was interesting because typically when we when we qualify here, you know, at night, you see the temperatures drop, track temp drops, speeds drop tremendously from practice. But we had such um, overcast skies today that um, the track was in almost as good a qualifying conditions um, then as it, you know, it was in great condition and, and the speeds were there and the grip was there. So, you know, we just had to make a few adjustments um, to try to make the car a little bit better. Those adjustments certainly worked. and. Um, that late draw, uh, you know, certainly uh, is always good. Just seeing what the other guys uh, are doing, the grip level, what the track uh, conditions are, and you know, I felt confident all day in the in the car. That just it just had good grip. Was doing the things I wanted it to do, and and um, you know, to to then go out there and know that the pressure's on you after the car ahead of you just sits on the pole, and uh, and you're battling with those guys for the championship, and. Um, to go out there and, and step it up and, and, and get the pole was really exciting. To do it here in Charlotte as well. I think it's been a while since we've won a pole here, and uh, man, it feels so good. So very proud of this team. They deserve a lot of credit. They, they gave me a fantastic car, not just today, but been bringing them uh, for the last several weeks, and that's uh, it's making a lot of fun for us. Grabbing the number 24, Exalta Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports, Jeff Gordon. Let's take questions now. Start here with Tom. We'll go back here to Alan and then to Viv. Hi, Jeff. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Congratulations. Two questions for you. Number one, how much on the ragged edge were you? And, and number two, you, you seem to have so much more energy lately and so much more enthusiasm. And you know, Can you talk about that a little bit? That's what happens when your cars are feeling good. And, and you know, it, that's the thing is you know, it's really hard to maintain your confidence in what you're doing and, and the team as well. When, uh, when you're struggling, when you're struggling in qualifying, you're struggling in the race. And uh, I felt like all year long we've been racing better than we've been qualifying, but qualifying was a weakness for us. We needed to get better track position. I mentioned that you know, earlier in the year. And um, it, you know, it's hard not to get down when, when things aren't going well. You know, you're, you're putting a great race together and something happens, whether you make a mistake or, or you know, the team does or, or a failure or whatever it may be. Um, when that keeps happening week after week, it's it's hard to uh, to come in here all bubbly and, and having fun because it wasn't fun. And uh, the reason that I'm like this now is because you know we never gave up. And and you know I, I, that's why I give this team a lot of credit. They they really stepped up. Uh, our setups are just suiting my uh, you know driving style and the things that I like to feel in the car. The cars are just you know giving me good feedback and. It's because they worked so hard through the summer to, to make improvements. We were watching what other teams are doing, uh, learning from our teammates, as well as just applying ourselves in the things that we're doing. And um, each week, you know, now I'm just building that confidence because those cars are giving me that, that confidence. Oh, um, you're always on the edge here qualifying. I mean, you know, you, you, you got to push it hard, but uh, the car really – really was good you know I, I, I feel like uh, my, my biggest fear was was the front losing the front not the back and um, I came to the green and the car stuck really good through three and four coming to the green so uh, you know I, I knew what I wanted to do in one and two that that I where I lost a little speed in practice it that went well for me down there and I thought okay that was pretty good I don't know if it was good enough but it's pretty good now don't screw up three and four. And in three and four, you know, I just really wanted to get that front end down to the to the white line and keep it there. I saw a lot of guys slide their nose, and that was a problem that we had in practice. And I think the adjustments the team made really helped because I was able to just keep squeezing in the throttle and the front end stayed down. And the car was actually uh, pretty stable and, 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 you know, felt felt great. But you know you're always right there on the edge at any time around Charlotte on, on a qualifying lap. Let's go to Allen and then to Viv and then to Marty Smith. Uh, Alan Kavan at NASCAR.com. I think you just touched on it, but in three and four, that's where Greg and Kevin said they really lost it if they if they had you know a pole speed. Is that something you watched throughout qualifying and you knew you had to hit three and four to to get the pole? Well, that's where we were off a little bit in in practice. I felt like you know that, that our car was tight through there, and and we tried to make some adjustments, um, you know, from our last qualifying run. And I we have dart fish. I don't know if all of you guys know what dart fish is, where they lay your laps over other competitors and do like a ghost video. 
And actually, my three and four was one of my better corners. It was actually one and two I needed to, to work with the most. But it still felt like we needed to make an adjustment. We made that adjustment. I made an adjustment in what I was doing in one and two. And it just brought the corners together. Um, you know, I don't know if those guys were losing time because they were rushing back to the throttle or because the car was just tight. But uh, I, I just, again, I, I think I, I was a little more patient than I wanted to be down there. But also when I got back to the throttle, I was able to get to it and stay in it and keep accelerating. So I felt like I carried good speed off of four. And, yeah, I watched it in, in qualifying, but that doesn't change what your car's doing. It, it might have changed my approach a slight bit. Uh, but the car's got to stick. That's, that's the bottom line. Let's go to Viv, and then we'll go to Marty, and then to Reed. Go ahead, go ahead, Viv. Okay, uh, Viv Bernstein, New York Times. Going to go a little off topic. It's been about a month since the whole scandal took place, and and I'm wondering if that's enough time to have a little perspective on how that whole thing might impact and change NASCAR moving forward. Well, it certainly wasn't a highlight, and um, you know I, I think. Time heals all wounds, in my opinion, and in my life's experiences that I've been through and seeing uh, other things that have happened um, in this sport and other sports and in life in general. So um, I, I don't know if we can fully put it in perspective at this point, you know, but uh, each race that we run in the chase and, and each race that everybody is pushing hard to try to win a championship is is another step closer to putting that incident behind us. All right, let's go to Marty, then Reed, and then Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Jeff, what would you say to anyone who felt like this was a two-car chase? Well, I mean, at this point, it's, it's never just narrowed down to two. There's just too much racing left, uh, too many points that can be gain and loss. Um, Talladega is around the corner. I think, you know, after Talladega, I think that, that, you know, if there are two cars that are far out there, you might be able to say that. But you certainly can't say that, um, you know, the fifth race, this is the fifth race, right? Fifth race into the chase. Um, and I don't think you can say it at all prior to Talladega either because there's just too many factors that can come out of that. But even Martinsville, I mean, there's this, just too much racing left to go. So those guys are strong and tough and great race teams going to be tough this weekend and and going to be tough every weekend so um it, they're going to be hard to beat uh but you know it's going to take performances like kevin did last week and you know a performance like we had tonight um to make up ground on those guys but it, it it's it's possible there's no doubt it's possible all right we'll go with uh reed bob pockris al pierce Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Similar question, but uh, how do you feel personally about your chances, and do you feel like you're going to have to win a race or two over the next six to have a chance? Yes, I, I do think we're going to have to win a race or two. Um, I can tell you that I'm feeling better every every race. Uh, I mean, you know, I thought that uh, you know we really started making ground up weeks prior to to Richmond, and then. Um, you know, in Chicago, I thought we were fantastic there and had to come from behind with the flat left rear tire and to get up to six. I thought that was a great performance. And just every week that we perform well and lead laps and, and run up front just builds our confidence that we can win races and, and put together some great runs and performances to um, get the points that we need. So every week, you know, we just gain in confidence. And at this point, it's just going all out giving it everything we have. We're not really thinking about points. We're just trying to win races and get the best finishes that we can. And, um, you know, right now we're just having fun. All right, we'll go with Bob Pockris, Al Pierce, Jim Utter. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. You talk about watching some of the guys on their qualifying lap a little bit. I'm curious, do you watch what your, that your teammates do more because you kind of have a little bit of idea of what's in their car? And what do you think when, you know, because three of them were in the top five before you went off. Well, certainly, um, you know, being in the same shop as the five car, um, you know, we, we know exactly what uh, all of our teammates have. But we also work, you know, probably a little bit closer with with Kenny, uh, and and so you know, we, when he went early, we uh, we knew what he had in practice, and we thought, you know, going out early certainly was gonna gonna hurt him. 
a little bit, but you know his comments uh, backed up what we were kind of seeing in practice, and it seemed like that was a trend that we saw. I didn't get to really watch much other than on the little monitor, uh, the 88. I didn't get to see the 48 really at all. But um, we, pay, we pay attention to them very closely because we do know what setups and balance on our sim computers and what it shows and you know, what our car should be. It's not always 100% accurate, but it's usually pretty close. And that, that definitely gives us direction. Um, for, and, and you know we can still make minor air pressure adjustments sitting there on pit road. So that's, to me, one of the biggest advantages of, of going out late is just seeing what the track's doing and knowing what our balance was and what adjustments maybe we need to meet, make. Sometimes that t takes you in the wrong path. You make the wrong adjustments, but sometimes you make the right ones. And I don't know if we made any tonight, but the car certainly did what I wanted it to. Let's go to uh, Al Pierce, Jim Utter, and finish up with Dustin Long. Jeff Al Pierce from Auto Week. When you saw what you had to do to win the poll, knowing you were the last guy out, did you think, you know, I can do that? Or did you think, man, eh, that's going to be awfully hard to, to beat? Well, I didn't know what Kevin, <clears throat> what he ran because he was the car right in front of me. I just, I saw he, he got the pole. I could see the pylon. I looked out my window when he went by and I saw he was first. So, you know, I knew that it was better than whatever Casey ran, which he ran in 87. And, and so, you know, I knew that I was going to have to run at least a couple tenths faster than I did, or, or at least a tenth faster than I did in practice. And I was just thinking more of where did I leave that on the racetrack uh, in practice? And, and, you know, and then you go down in three and four, and when the car sticks, you know, that's one step closer. You just, your car gives you confidence, it sticks, you go, okay, that's good. You know, I carried good speed to the start finish line, then to turn one. And, you know, I, I made my arc in there, and when it takes that set and you get back in the throttle, if it gives you good feedback, you just keep feeding the throttle, and, and you know, then you think down the back straight away what you need to do for the next corner, and um, you hope it sticks, and, and luckily tonight it did. Jim Hutter, and finish with Dustin Long. Jim Hutter, Charlotte Observer. Uh, you, have, you have talked about qualifying at times all year. But really, in recent weeks, you've talked about it a lot more about needing to qualify better. I just wondered, it almost sounded like you were challenging either your team or yourself or, or perhaps both. Did you consider it something of that well, sort? Well, I do consider my, myself a part of the team. So uh, I'm always challenging myself and the team as one. Um, you know, I listen, I, I, I always take uh, – my part on my shoulders, you know, and, and, and when we go into our debriefs, when we m go through practice, when we go through a race, you know, I'm, I'm no more important, no less important than anybody else out there. Um, but they have to trust in me just like I have to trust in them. And all, all we have is, is that, that communication back and forth. And, you know, to, to me, these guys have stuck with me all year long at times when I was frustrated myself, and I know they were frustrated with me that I didn't feel like I was getting the most out of it. Um, but they also, I think, knew that they probably needed to make some some adjustments themselves as well on the on the setups. And we just, we've come together, you know, that's all I can say is, is uh, you know, we've come together, our cars are just performing better. And, and now we're able to build some positive confidence and momentum that we were lacking earlier in the season. And this is going to be huge. I mean, I know it's just qualifying, but, you know, this is, this is huge. You know, I see the look on my guy's face when I come out of a race and we're passing cars and driving to the front like Chicago. You know, we, we went to the back, but we were driving our way up through there and had a very fast race car. And those guys were fired up over that. They saw that, you know, I might be 42 years old and been in the sport a long time and barely made it in the chase, but you know, put us in that moment with a with the car that that um, handles like that, and I'm going to give it everything I've got. So we're really come together as a team. I guess is basically what I'm trying to say. Final question, Dustin. Dustin Long, Motor Racing Network. Jeff, you talk about and you've talked about momentum in the past and just how important it's been for for any team. When you guys get the qualifying draw that you get here, and and you know that that your your lap was a great lap, but certainly it's helped by that qualifying draw. What does that mean? How did that you know? 
I saw some of your guys say it looked like they were pretty excited when it happened. What did it mean for you? How does that how does that impact the day? How does that carry over to to something like this? You know, now you've got the pole. Now potentially you don't have to worry as much about track position. You've got the first pit stall. How does how does that kind of build and build and does this start to feel like any other year in the chase that, or any other championship <coughs> year? Yeah, well, I don't know about that. Uh, we have never won a chase, so I, you know, I don't know what it's like to win a championship under this format, and it feels like it was uh, another lifetime ago when I won a championship. It seems like it's been so long, but um, I mean, tonight, yeah, tonight felt like it because we won the pole. You know, we were fast at Charlotte. That's a big deal. You know, this is like home for everybody, and um, everybody's bringing all the power that they've got, the best race car they've got, and, um, you know, everybody's stepping it up. And, I mean, when you know, we, last week we drew number two, and we weren't real thrilled about that. We knew we were going to suffer a little bit from it. Tonight we drew, you know, 44 and ended up going out 43rd. And we knew we, it was an opportunity. But to me, the bigger opportunity was how good the car was in practice. Uh, the car just, you know, we're fourth fastest uh, and, and made two really solid qualifying runs. And to me, that, that was more important than going out 44th. It was just an added bonus to go out 44th. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where the car builds – the car builds confidence in me, and when I go out there, you know, and we, we go out there and together and win a pole, it builds <coughs> confidence back in the team. There's nothing greater than when it's all on the line, you know, all the pressure is there. You're the final car to go. You had a great practice. Um, there's nothing worse than letting them down, and there's nothing better than stepping up and knocking it out of the park. And, you know, that's what I feel like we did tonight. And that, that makes me feel good because I know those guys are fired up for this race and, and for every race from here on out. And, 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 you know, I don't know what more to say other than, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have everybody believing in one another like we do right now.